Um, we're about to have one of them conversations I just enjoy having because we've got one of them guests that you don't see very often. Like he makes his appearance here and there, but when he makes his appearance, his appearance is felt. This man got so much history in the music industry, and I'm looking forward to having one of them good old fashioned music conversations and just learning from this icon in the music industry. Please welcome one of the best managers to ever do it in a hip hop game. Matter of fact, hip hop, R&B, just in a music game. <laughs> Michael Blue Thank Williams. Blue, what up, Chris. man? Thank you, man. I appreciate, appreciate the kind words, man. I really do. Pleasure to be here. You, you know something? It's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, I've been wanting to get you on for a while, actually. And, uh, you know, just having you in the building, I know that this conversation is going to help a lot of people who's aspiring to do all of the things that you've done in your career. So thanks for making time for us. Man, look, I, I, a long time ago, someone taught me this information, the knowledge, the experience that we learned, they're not meant to be kept to ourselves. It's selfish of you to, to garner a bunch of information, learn how to do things, and then just take it with you or keep it to yourself. And so for me, anytime I can talk to somebody, I can share some, that, that's really how I feel. I don't feel like this is mine to hold. I think anything that I've learned in now my 30 years in industry, if we can help somebody get through that next step or hearing the story, I'm happy to share that information. Yo, you want to know something? That that's a that's a really good way, um, and, and a great outlook to have on life and on business. I, I remember when I was interning in the '90s, and I was trying my best to get in the music industry, and I was taking internship after internship, and I couldn't get a job to save my life. And the reason being, it was because people felt just the opposite of what you just said. They were so afraid to pass on information. They were so afraid to share and to help somebody else get in, not realizing that if you help somebody up, that person's indebted to you for the remainder of their career. So oh, yeah. just hearing you say those words, that, that's a great way to look at life and that business to to i i've often felt and maybe it's because i'm six five and maybe because i look at life i think maybe from a different perspective and, I, and i've always played sports so i'm used to being a team player but selfishness just isn't in that sense isn't who i am and, and it's, it really you keep people out or you block somebody from getting in you may have blocked your next set, set of blessings when you expand and you give people their chance uh, these people I talked to that I might have had two conversations with in 1998. And in that conversation, though, it struck a chord with them. And now we're circling back and they're vice president of some company. But that conversation, that opportunity, it circles back. I'm starting with a head start with whatever I'm there to see them with because I put good energy out. The, the, the worst thing I tell managers is I'll happily share the information because I hate stupid managers. Stupid managers make it harder for good managers. Like if your manager's an idiot and he's taking whatever people are throwing out there, then he's messing up the curve for us. Yep. So whether it's, whether it's booking shows, dealing with the labels, whatever, like 360 deals worked in the industry because they broke one and then two and then three, but they broke, they started with people they knew they could break. They didn't come see me and Chris Lighty and us first. They knew they had to fight with us for the 360, right? That, they knew that was going to be a fight. So if we can make it an industry norm by getting the new lawyers, the new lawyers, the new artists, we'll trick them first. Then we'll start with the ones that aren't as bright or as experienced. It, so it's on us. If I'm going to teach the next generation of managers how not to get fooled with old tricks, because they, they run the same tricks. They just rebag them. It's, it's necessary to have conversations and communicate and, and um, you know, keep 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 the growth going. Like the NBA has grown because Magic and them listened to Bill Russell and them, and then Magic and them grew it. Then Jordan grew it. When LeBron and D Wade and them get in, they grow on top of what all of them have done. In the music industry, sometimes I don't feel like because the the um 
the format changes that have taken place, it's almost been at every format, we've almost had a reset. And at each reset point, they start the same bullshit. Yep. So that's kind of, so to the point of I communicate because I don't think I own it. And I think that it can only help everybody if I'm willing to tell stories or share my troubles, whatever it is. I, I do, I feel like that in music, in life, mental health issues, whatever, by, by being willing to communicate, somebody's not going to feel alone out there and may, you may help them get over whatever hurdle they're dealing with. Yo, what do you say to somebody? Because again, I, I, can, I can go back to when I was struggling and, and, and dying to get in this music industry. And I just couldn't because the people I was working up under and interning up under, they felt threatened. They felt threatened with a guy who knew nothing. I was just hungry. I just wanted in. And they literally would, would, would be like this, hoarding information. If, you know, back in them days, it, it was faxes, or if they mm-hmm. wanted you to call, they was blocking the numbers. It was crazy stuff going on. <laughs> like, what, what, what do you say to somebody who right now is, is threatened by somebody coming up under them? Not realizing that this person could be your could be a blessing in the future. I mean, the truth is, you got to check check your ego and your person and your insecurities. People, people, when you have a lot of insecurities, when you're not really confident that you should even be there, or you're not confident in your ability, that's how you get threatened. If you're confident, I do what I do, and can't nobody do what I do like I do, then you shouldn't feel threatened. I'll tell people all the time. I can tell you the formula. I'll, I'll tell you the map. That don't mean you can do what I do. I tell somebody, this is exactly what I did with Outcast. Go ahead. But you can't, so I'm not threatened, but I can't speak for, you know, we got a lot of, of um, people in this industry that this industry became their armor. It became their identity. It became who they are. And losing that space and losing that, and um, that's why, when we get positions of power, that's why we don't have enough black executives. Because when we got positions of power, we usually put a white person in right next to us as the second in command. And then we didn't empower enough of our own people. So that's why we don't have enough black executives. Like white people had a lot to do with it, but the reason we don't have a lot of competent black executives is because of the black executives that we thought were competent at the time, not teaching. There you go. So if you didn't teach, don't stand on the outside now and go, damn, the industry, blah, blah. No, because when you were running it, you didn't empower nobody. Or when people started to come up around you, you would get scared and fire them. Or you, like, we, we have been our own enemies in this industry. Um, and it's, it's going to come back to bite us sooner than later. No, I'm going to tell you something. I'm listening to you, and, and I swear, um, you are echoing not just my sentiments, but words I have actually said out of my own mouth. You, you, I, I can remember talking to my staff and talking to my team. And I was so free with my contact information. I was so free with the way I did things. Yo, you go, you call this person. Just let them know you calling. You work with Sean Prez. You go, you do this. Because I knew a couple of things. Number one, if I empower somebody, they were going to work super hard for me. They were going to be out there as long as they can get in the club and they can, you know, get a phone call through Mm -hmm. using my name. They were always going to work super hard. But I also knew if I could get 10 people that I put on, that means I'm in 10 places at once. Yeah. And all of these people, they know it was me. It was Prez who put me in position. And anything he need, I got him. So now I got an army out there all over the country who is happy to pick up a phone call for me or even somebody I can't get a call through for. Prez, hold up, I got him. It, and I never, ever felt threatened. I never felt threatened. And I know that has to come from my days of trying to get in and I watch people hold people down. 
you know, and I always thought it was the worst way to carry out business. I, I, I never thought that that was the way. Have, doing it the other way, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to call it legacy, but it is legacy. It so is, and it's, it's proven. You put on is doing it. That means you still in the game. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I catch you all on the next video.